Them Myrtle's Foundation is definitely like the scariest place I've ever been. So I've seen people actually running back to their cars. There are several, several people who don't make it through the night. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 famous haunted houses. Some believe that Sally's spirit torments those who visit or dare to live in the home. For this list, we'll be looking at the scariest houses that allegedly suffer from paranormal activity. Have you visited any of these places? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20. House of the Seven Gables Salem, Massachusetts is a historic American town known for the infamous witch trials of the late 1600s. The House of the Seven Gables, or Turner House, is one of its most famous symbols. A house that inspired hundreds of pages about witchcraft and murder has more secrets lurking under its seven gables. The colonial mansion was built in 1668 by Samuel Wardwell, who would later be executed during the trials. The house is now a museum, and many people have reported paranormal activity within its walls. There is allegedly a young boy who plays in or near the attic, a man who climbs a staircase, and even the spirit of Susanna Ingersoll, the cousin of novelist Nathaniel Hawthorne. Hawthorne would publish a very famous book titled After the House of Seven Gables in 1851. The main reason that it's famous is because of the author Nathaniel Hawthorne. He used it as a setting of his novel. Number 19, Ennis House. South of Los Angeles, Griffith Park is one of the city's most esteemed landmarks. Welcome to one of the most unusual and most celebrated houses in the United States. This is the Ennis House. Found on the U.S. National Register of Historic Places, built in 1924, Ennis House came from the mind of architect Frank Lloyd Wright and is acclaimed for its textile block design. It was made famous after being seen in movies like House on Haunted Hill and Blade Runner. While gorgeous, the house has a very threatening and operatic atmosphere, which lends to its eerie reputation. When you first walk in, the entrance feels very dark and enclosed. Wright likes to use compression and release, guiding you toward the main spaces of the house. It may also house the literal and metaphorical ghosts of many, including Lloyd Wright, Frank Lloyd Wright's son. Number 18, Burton Agnes Hall. English manor houses typically have a certain creepy quality to them, and Burton Agnes Hall is no exception. Built all the way back in the early 1600s, it's found in East Yorkshire and is noted for its exceptional architecture and history. It's said to harbour the ghost of Anne Griffith, who was enamoured with the house as it was being built. She proceeded to pass away there and has apparently never left. It's also said that Griffith's skull is entombed in the manor, and that whenever it was removed, her ghost would show great displeasure. Number 17, Kehoe House. Found in Georgia's Savannah Historic District is the Kehoe House. Built in 1892, it was owned by William Kehoe, an Irish immigrant who attained great success in the iron business. Mr. Kehoe was an iron worker. And he said, anything that you can make out of wood, I can make it out of iron. It was one of two houses that he owned in the area. The other is located close by, also in the city's Columbia Square. Kehoe House has since been converted into a renowned inn. Many guests have spoken of ghostly children playing, perfume scent spreading through when no one has walked by, and the sensation of being touched in bed. Number 16, Croke Patterson Campbell Mansion. While the name is a bit of a mouthful, the Croke Patterson Campbell Mansion is one of Denver's greatest architectural delights. It is the house that everyone knows. There's so much written about it. A house of stories. I think I know every story. And secrets. Does anybody need help? The 19th century house immediately stood out not only because of its size, but because of its sandstone and chateau-esque style. It was initially owned by Senator Thomas B. Croke before being bought by politician Thomas M. Patterson. Is it Patterson that comes to this room, Mr. Patterson? He and his wife Catherine's daughter then tied the knot, which is where the Campbell part of the name comes in. 
It has since been renovated into an inn that many believe is haunted. The light just turned on. These mediums feel it's the spirit of a woman. I feel her pain. Guests have reported hearing ghostly voices and seeing the calming presence of past owner Catherine Patterson. Number 15, Labadee Mansion. Tucked away in the northeast corner of Oklahoma is the Labadee Mansion. The house is property of the Labadee family, and it has been in their possession since construction began in the late 1800s. Numerous legends surround the mansion, many of them quite violent and unfortunately hard to verify. The house currently sits on private property, but the owner has granted permission to curious explorers to investigate what remains of the place. So what's this? What say, Mammy? What's this building dated? Is it 1800s or early 19? Uh, 1800s. People have reported paranormal activity like distant cries, smoke issuing from the fireplace, and even the spirits of original owners Frank and Samantha Labadee. Number 14, Blickling Hall. Now owned and conserved by the National Trust, Blickling Hall is found in Norfolk, England, and was built back in the 17th century. Blickling Hall is the jewel in the National Trust crown in Norfolk. Its family history is indeed varied with tales of king's mistresses, political intrigue and social ambition. It's notable both for its Jacobian architecture and its extensive library. It's also located on the land where the old Berlin house used to be. What strikes you when you first come into the library is this ornate ceiling and there's mm. obviously a lot of history and pattern to it. Anne Berlin was probably born there in the early 1500s, adding another layer of intrigue. The hall is allegedly filled with notable inhabitants, including the headless Anne and her dad, Thomas. It's also said to harbour the spirit of John Fastolf, a medieval knight who partly inspired Shakespeare's iconic character, John Falstaff. Number 13, Merchant's House Museum. An iconic New York landmark, Merchant's House Museum, is found on Manhattan's East 4th Street. The home's architectural and historical worth are impossible to ignore, as it's been completely preserved since its construction in 1832. An unusual aspect about the museum's rooms is not only that the furniture has always been in this house, but it is all scattered about the way a family would have had it. The New York Times has called it Manhattan's most haunted house, and it's hard not to see why. The residence remained in the possession of the Treadwell family for close to a century, and it seems they've left their mark in a rather permanent way. And she was looking in Mrs. Treadwell's mirror, and uh, she asked Mrs. Treadwell, do you think I'm pretty? And we got a response which sounds like a female voice saying pleasant enough. The museum's employees and guests have reported encountering the ghost of Gertrude Treadwell, who in 1933 became the last member of the immediate family to die. Number 12, Roanoke. Built in 1844 by Robert Shegog, this Greek revival mansion is best known as the late author William Faulkner's old residence. And he liked to live in a big mansion. He had a lovely house called Roanoke. And to support his lifestyle, he wanted to live like a southern aristocrat. It was here that he penned his renowned novel, A Fable. A few years after his passing, Rowan Oak was bought by the University of Mississippi, and they continue to own and preserve the house to this day. Visitors have reported seeing the ghost of Faulkner himself. Some visitors sometimes say that they felt a presence in, in different rooms, uh, particularly the guest bedroom. The house is kept as he left it, with the scribbled outlines of a fable that he famously left on the office walls still there. Perhaps he still feels an attachment to its grounds. Number 11, Delaware Governor's Mansion. This place goes by various names, including the Delaware Governor's Mansion, or simply Woodburn. No matter what you call it, there's no denying it has an interesting story. It was first built in 1790, but it wasn't until the 1960s that it began serving as the home of Delaware's sitting governor. Reports of paranormal activity go all the way back to the 1820s and continue to this day. Footsteps, gliding ghosts, smiling portraits, and even disappearing wine have all allegedly been witnessed. But it's not all harmless activity. Some have seen the body of a man hanging from a tree. That is said to be the spirit of an old slave raider. Number 10, The Sally House. 
This famous haunted house is found in the small town of Atchison, Kansas. From the outside, it just looks like a plain white home. But inside the Sally House, there's definitely a creepy vibe that lives up to its reputation. Constructed in the 19th century, it was once owned by a physician named Charles Finney, who worked out of his abode. Legend states that a young girl named Sally was brought to Dr. Finney, complaining of a stomachache. He did what he could to save her, but she died during the operation. The story goes that she then died on the operating table. Some believe that Sally's spirit torments those who visit or dare to live in the home. It's now said that her ghost haunts the home and that she takes a particular dislike towards male visitors. Some have mentioned being touched by an unseen presence and others claim to have been attacked, resulting in bruises and bloody scratches. Number 9. The Villisca House one of Iowa's most infamous crimes occurred back in June of 1912. I've heard that people get so scared in here that they go running out of the house, never to return. And I'd like to see what it is that frightens them so much. In the very small town of Villisca, eight people were killed inside a house by an assailant wielding an axe. Numerous folks were investigated, and among them was Reverend George Kelly, who went to trial twice. No one was ultimately found responsible, and the whole thing is still unsolved. The house in which the crime occurred is said to be haunted due to its incredibly violent history. It has been visited by many notable ghost hunting and paranormal reality shows, and has been the subject of numerous podcasts. Going into that house and being completely alone for the first time, was more intimidating than I thought it was going to be. And I remember, at first, I didn't even want to bring up the murders. Number eight, the Lalaurie Mansion. The story of New Orleans socialite Delphine Lalaurie is well known. When you come in the house, like certain spots, I don't like to go in by myself. I don't come in here by myself at night. I'm scared. Really? Because really? you just have an eerie vibe. Lalaurie owned a mansion in the city's historic French Quarter, and it was here that she mistreated and killed slaves. Once her crimes became public, a mob stormed her house and left it in significant disrepair. It was later rebuilt and continues to stand. The house is said to be haunted by the people who were once tormented, and sounds like groaning and footsteps can be heard issuing throughout. However, visiting the mansion is out of the question, as it is currently a private residence. So one of the rumors is that people have conducted different rituals in here. I've seen stuff, but I don't know what actually has transpired. I was not here for any of it. Mm -hmm. Number seven, Franklin Castle. Said to be one of Ohio's hottest paranormal hotspots, Franklin Castle is found in the Cleveland area. It was constructed in the 1880s for Hannes Tiedemann, the co-founder of the Union Banking and Savings Corporation. There are stories that, uh, uh, that the original owner of the house might have murdered family members. The residence has a horribly tragic past which is largely why so many believe it's haunted. Many people passed away inside, including Tiedemann's mother, wife, and four of his children. Suspicion eventually fell on Tiedemann himself, as so many people around him were dying. The Tiedemann's daughter, Emma, who died from diabetes, believed to haunt the home along with the lady in black, her mother, who looks out windows. Though they were just rumors, they ultimately hurt his standing and bolstered the area that the house is haunted. Tiedemann sold the place in 1896 and remarried. Number 6. Myrtle's Plantation A famous house of the antebellum style, Myrtle's Plantation, is found in St. Francisville, Louisiana, and is included on the U.S. National Register of Historic Places. Don't let the picturesque setting fool you. This is known as the most haunted bed and breakfast in the country. Check in but don't expect to make it through the night. It was built in 1796 by politician David Bradford after he fled to the South because of his role in the violent Whiskey Rebellion. His abode is said to be one of the most haunted in the United States. It allegedly contains a minimum of a dozen spirits, including that of Chloe, a slave who is said to have killed owner Sarah Woodruff and her two daughters with a poisoned cake. All these years later, Chloe still roams the halls of this old plantation. And she's not alone. From previous owners to slaves that once worked on the property. While the story is fabricated, it's the most famous legend associated with the Myrtles Plantation. Number 5. 
Whaley House. Constructed back in 1857 in San Diego, Whaley House is among California's greatest paranormal and historical treasures. There is no doubt in your mind, is there, that there are spirits in this oh, house? Oh, definitely. I think they'll always be here. The house was built by Thomas Whaley, who moved from Manhattan during the gold rush of the mid-1800s. It was the city's first brick house, and sections of it were used as a theater, courthouse, and more. Many members of the Whaley family died inside the residence and it's now believed to be extremely haunted. We believe that sometimes you might smell his cigar smoke. His wife Anna passed away in the house in 1913. We believe you might smell her lavender perfume. It's thought to harbor the spirits of Thomas Whaley, his wife Anna, and even their young child Thomas, whose giggles can allegedly be heard emanating from the empty hallways. Number four, Winchester Mystery House. One of California's most notorious attractions, the Winchester Mystery House has baffled visitors and architects for centuries. Well, the Winchester Mystery House is a very special place. It was built with no master plan, but there are a lot of architectural oddities that remain a mystery as to why they're here. Found in San Jose, it was built throughout the late 19th and early 20th centuries and was owned by Sarah Winchester. Her late husband, William Winchester, was the owner of the Winchester Repeating Arms Company. Legend has it that Sarah was haunted by the victims of Winchester rifles and added to the house in nonsensical fashion in order to escape their vengeful spirits. However, this story has largely been debunked. Sarah Winchester was a true pioneer. She was a woman ahead of her time. I think she just enjoyed the process so much, she just wanted to keep on working. So she would get different ideas and they would try them out. And if it worked, great. If not, they would tear it down and try something new. Regardless, the house is still rumored to be haunted. Its bizarre architecture and staircases that have no destination certainly help the myth live on. Number three, the Lizzie Borden House. On August 4th, 1892, Andrew Borden and his wife Abby were bludgeoned to death with an ax in their home. Suspicion fell on Borden's daughter Lizzie, but she was eventually acquitted of all charges. But was it actually Lizzie Borden and was an ax actually used to kill her stepmother and father? The murder mystery haunts the city of Fall River 129 years later. The case remains unsolved and is one of the most legendary crimes the state of Massachusetts has ever seen. The house is now a very famous bed and breakfast that is sought by paranormal investigators and those interested in the macabre story. Someone answered one of our questions, but only one. Communication ceased the second we brought up the double murder. All sorts of unusual activity have apparently been witnessed, including ghostly faces, footsteps, laughter, and even physical attacks. Number two, the Amityville House. Much has been written and said about the world famous Amityville House, which is extremely well known for its supposed hauntings. Back in 1974, a man named Ronald DeFeo Jr. murdered six of his family members inside the house. DeFeo's trial one year later, defense attorney William Weber tries to prove that his client was legally insane at the time he committed the murders and therefore not responsible for his actions. Ultimately, the jury finds him sane and guilty on all six counts of second-degree murder. The Lutz family moved in shortly after and allegedly dealt with severe supernatural activity. It got so bad that they fled after less than a month, and their experience was famously captured in Jay Anson's book, The Amityville Horror. Both the book and the Lutz's claims have long been scrutinized, and no other owner has reported any paranormal activity. Regardless, the home's reputation is nearly unmatched. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the White House. It's an extravagant house, but a house nonetheless. 
And apparently, it's a very haunted one at that. White House Historical Association Chief Historian William Bashong says the more prominent the president, the more prominent in ghost lore, like Abraham Lincoln. This residence has housed every American president since it was completed in November of 1800. As of 2022, George Washington is the only commander-in-chief who didn't live inside the White House, as it was completed about three years after his presidency ended. It's said that the White House is extremely haunted, housing the souls of Abraham Lincoln, Andrew Jackson, and Thomas Jefferson, just to name a few. He had a rocking chair, and so people said later that they could hear that rocking chair still going on. Laughing, violin playing, marriage proposals, banging on doors, ghostly torches, the smell of lavender, such paranormal occurrences are all allegedly commonplace. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.